Hey everybody, welcome to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and in this video, I am going to show you just how easy it can be to upgrade your own furniture on a budget and get a whole new look. I wanna start this project off by saying thank you and giving a big shout out to some of our patrons over on our new Patreon membership platform. The people that I wanna shout out are Poppy, Nelly, Rendy, Shelly, Bria, Christine, Cynthia, and Anaya, and Bex. These people have come over to Patreon just to support us on another level. If you're interested in seeing some behind the scenes content, more exclusive content, getting your name shouted out in a video like this, there is a link down below in the description and we would love to have you over there. There's also an exclusive chat group that you could be a part of as well. Let's get into the project. So this entryway table is actually my parents' entryway table. And after Christmas and taking all the decorations off of it, it definitely shows that it needs a little bit of love. So I told them, you know what? I think that it would be a great first project of the year. They were thinking about just getting a whole new entryway table. And I was like, time out, who am I? Let's actually just flip this one. So I'm gonna give this a really cool look on a budget and it's gonna be on trend with some of the things that I've been seeing around in different stores and online stores as well. So I went to Target online and I was looking around for just some inspiration on what maybe I wanted to do with this table. This table is like over 50 years old, but it is very solid and it still has has some great bones and some great life left in it. So I found this picture of this entryway table that I'll pop here on the screen and I got inspired, but it was $250. So I figured let's make over this table on a budget so that my parents don't have to spend $250 on a cheap, not even wood table. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the glass just for the time being, but I will be putting this back in there. This is the cool part because we still get to keep a little bit of the originality of this table, but we're going to just give it a little bit of a fresher look. So down under here, the cane part is popping off. So I originally just grabbed my staple gun and I was gonna put it all back together. Um, but I figured that I want to actually paint this another color. So I'm gonna completely remove this and paint it and then we'll attach it back at the end. I wanna thank Dixie Bell Paint Company for sponsoring this video. So in this video, I will be using all of their products for each and every step. And I'll also link them down below in case you're interested. So first we need to clean. I'm gonna be using their white lightning cleaner. It is a granule substance that sort of reminds people of salt, but no, I'm not putting salt on the furniture to clean it. It actually is a TSP based cleaner that I put inside of this spray bottle and it dissolves and now it is a cleaning solution. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray the surface of my table to get and to get it all clean. There's tons of dust on it and we just need a fresh surface to paint. So not too bad. I have been one to clean this table a few times over the years. Generally, we just kind of wipe down the top, the surfaces, not really the legs and stuff. So, but I would say eh, maybe a B minus. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Alrighty, next step is that I'm gonna flip this guy over and we are going to remove the staples that are in there and then we'll get to scuff sanding. Okay, I'm seeing that I missed some dust bunnies underneath here, so I need to get that. Another reason that is a good idea to flip your furniture over and also clean the bottom too. 
So for scuff sanding, that means that I am just going to be roughening up the surface a little bit. It is pretty glossy and smooth in most areas. So I'm gonna take a medium grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna be hand sanding it. This piece could use a, uh, we could use a sander with this piece. However, sometimes you just don't need to whip out your whole entire big sanding machine. And so sometimes I just go for a surf prep rad pad. This is a medium grit sandpaper, which is perfect for scuff sanding, which means we're just gonna create a little bit of tooth, a little bit of texture, um, instead of having it be so glossy so that our paint can actually adhere on to the surface. I'm gonna be wearing my RZ mask here. There's a link below. FFT 10 can get you 10% off, but this is a great, um, a thing to have in your arsenal of equipment and tools for flipping because it's really going to protect your lungs and keep you healthy in the long run. I'm just gonna rub this across the surface and see how we're getting that different color. That's exactly what we want. We're basically um, scratching this, the finish. done however there were a couple of areas that I kind of created um, that are a little bit um, of a little deeper scratches so I am gonna grab my um, orbital sander really quick just to sand out and even those out um, because I just need a little bit more pressure um, so that I can smooth it out All right, much better. I think what happened was the sun was fading it and so some of the finish was really failing um, and therefore it was some, some cracking was happening and different things, but I got it all smoothed out. So now I'm gonna show you what color I'm gonna paint this guy. We're going black. So I'm gonna be using Silk Paint by Dixie Belle in the color Anchor. And then as you can see behind me, we are gonna be spraying this onto the table. I just figured with the legs and the curves, this would just be the easiest way to go. So I always strain my paint, no matter which paint I'm using, and that way it doesn't have any sort of debris or chunks that um, may clog up the sprayer. So I'm just going to pour in about half of this container. I think that'll be enough for honestly two to three coats because it's not very much surface area here. So once I get my half of my jar in here, um, then I'm also going to pour just a little bit of water. With the silk paint, you don't want to overwater it. However, I like to water it down just a tad because then it goes through your sprayer really smoothly. So I just put about an ounce in there and then once it all strains through, I'll be able to mix it up and see if I think I wanna add a little bit more water. And as you get um, more used to and familiar with spraying paint, if that's the way you choose to do it, you'll sort of understand and see um, which types of consistencies you like for your paint. I tend to like them a bit smoother and a bit thinner because that way I don't have any issues with my spray gun and it sprays right through, no problem. All right, we got the perfect consistency, so time to put the sprayer head on. The nozzle, and this is the Wagner Flexio model. I will link it down below. Um, and then I really like how this detaches from the motor. And that way when you're cleaning it, it doesn't, you don't have any issues with like water getting in the motor or anything like that because it's fully detachable. And you can also get tons of these nozzles, use them for different things like primers, paints, and top coats. I like to save one just for top coats since that's generally gonna be clear. All right, let's spray. 
I set down these painter's pyramids so that I can prop up the table so that way it won't be sticking to the ground or anything like that. I'm gonna start with it flipped upside down on its top so I can be sure to get around the bottom in every single little nook and cranny. Also, I wanted to make sure I told you guys the reason why I'm not priming is because the silk paint has the primer built into it for adhesion purposes. And I'm not worried about the bleed through from the wood because it is a black paint. So we're not gonna get any bleed through since it's so dark. So since the primer's built in adhesion wise and I took that extra step of scuff sanding, we should be good to go. First coat on the bottom here is finished. So once that dries, I'll probably do another coat when it's flipped over like this and then we'll do some more when I flip it over again. We're ready for coat number two on the bottom here. Grab my mask. While that second coat is drying, I am going to grab my cane bottom here and we're gonna clean it up and start to paint it as well. So I'm just gonna use the white lightning again. There's a lot of dust like stuck in, in the crevices. So I'm hoping that I can sort of get that out without having to soak this board because this is like a MDF or particle board type of material all the way through. So if I get this too wet, it will start to absorb and expand and that is something we do not want. So we're just going to go very lightly with the water here while still trying to get all of it clean. I do see that these guys are still on the back of this, so I also am gonna remove the leftovers. Now we'll rinse to get all that cleaning solution off, and I'll show you what color I'm painting this. Sandbar is the color we're gonna be using. This is the color that I have really always liked using for any sort of like burlap or cane look. I just think it is the most neutral and easy color to work with and it really mimics that cane color in my opinion. So I'm just going to be taking my sandbar and dabbing it in. I'll sort of do some brush marks back and forth as well, brush strokes, and then I'll also dabble it in so that it gets on those multiple layers and so that we cover the entire surface. I'm already able to tell that this is going to need another coat just for full coverage. And that's pretty typical for lighter colors of paint. Okay, first coat, done. Let's let that dry. And I think this should be dry for me to flip it over and do another coat of black. So we've got one more coat to do, but it's not a really a full coat because I've done three, two like half coats and one half coat um, with switching it up and down. Uh, but I am just doing a once over to make sure that I get all of the wood covered in paint. There's a couple spots that um, I see that I just really need to make sure to grab. Um, even though I'm not gonna be necessarily painting like the whole thing over again. I just see one here back in the corner. So I'm just double checking because I don't wanna miss any areas. Okay, second coat on the cane here. Black all done, so that's drying. 
And then killing two birds with one stone here. This is honestly like one of the last steps, except assembling it all back together. Everything is going to dry overnight. And then I will come back and assemble everything and then show you what it looks like in the space. All right, we've got a nice smooth and dry finish here on the table. So now it's time to reassemble it. I am going to flip it over on its top so that we can put the cane bottom in first with my Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer. So this turned out really awesome and I love how that I got full coverage so it looks like it was always supposed to be like that. Going down on there like so. And then I've got a 5 8 inch nail inserted into here so um, I did a little test. This will go through all the way. However, it won't go like, it won't penetrate the other side um, and stick out the top um, through the wood. It'll just for sure connect and attach to the place where it will not come off. When you're using a brad nailer, it's just important that you go slow and you take your time. You make sure that you're going to put it in the exact precise location that you are aiming for. I'm gonna restart real quick. I had a few areas where the brad nailer, the brad nail was too far toward the middle. So it basically went through the cane instead of through the wooden part, just like I tried not to do, but it happens. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Might have a few touch-ups from where it may have busted through the black part or the cane part, but that's no big deal. So just a couple touch-ups here. And then I'll show you the final reveal. So I've been able to keep the design and the look of the actual piece of furniture secret from my mom for this whole time that I've been flipping. I haven't allowed her to go into the garage. And the only thing that she really helped with was picking out some new frames. Um, and we got them all at Kohl's for a pretty good deal. She had a coupon, so that was really awesome because frames can be really expensive. But anyway, she has no clue that when she gets home today that this is all gonna be set up. She's thinking that it's gonna be tomorrow. So I cannot wait to see her actual reaction, but we're gonna get all this set up so that it's ready for when she gets home. Perfect. Already looks good. Okay. Okay, now that that is in there, the glass is all clean. And so I am going to go ahead and put some of the frames on here and just spruce it up a little bit. So nothing too crazy, but definitely updated the space a lot. I am loving how it looks. We may add a few more picture frames. There were a ton more on here and my mom really wants to keep them all. Um, so we'll see about that, but let's wait until mom gets home. I cannot wait to see her reaction. I thought it was locked. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> looks so good. It looks so different, totally. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Surprise! That's because it's an all-new piece. <clears throat> no, it is not. 
I can tell, but it's just so updated. So nice. Thank you. I love it. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I think it is safe to say that my mom absolutely loves her new piece. We think that it really pops off of the wood instead of having a same color piece, the black really pops. And she just loves that we, you know, put some new frames. She even loved the little plant that I added in there just for a little bit of greenery and to be easy on the eye. So I really wanted to talk to you guys about the cost of this project. I told you at the beginning that it was going to be budget friendly and that I had found a a table that was very similar to the look I was going for for $250 at Target. So I already had the table, so instead of getting something new, why not flip it? So the paint, which I told you at the beginning that I was probably only gonna use about half of that um, jar, I did end up using the full 16 ounces just because I wanted to make sure to get inside of all of the nooks and crannies. And so that jar of paint cost $25. And then since the primer and the top coat was already included, I didn't have to spend any more money on that. So as far as other materials go, things like my um, sandpaper and then the, the paint that I use to paint the cane, well, let's give that about a $10 cost. So we're in all the way at $35 just to make over this piece. So $250, or $35. I think I'll take the $35 and then just a little bit of time and effort to get a very, very similar look with a much more high quality piece of furniture as well. If you wanna include the cost of the frames and the plant, that would probably put us right around $100. So even with all of the extras, we are still significantly lower. So keep that in mind. If you are looking to get new furniture, maybe you can just use the things that you have around your house. Thank you guys so much for watching. Get subscribed and give a like down there on that thumbs up button, and I'll see you on the flip side.